Hey guys, Mike Vecht here with Yoga for Men, and the practice that you're about to see is what we call our game day prep practice. And the feedback that I've gotten from the football players that I've worked with is that this particular type of practice done the day before the game left them feeling like they were ready to go when they hit the field the next day. They got a good night's sleep the night before, they got focused, and when it was time to hit the field, they were ready to go. You might also find this practice beneficial, say, after game day as a way to come back into balance to work out the kinks, that sort of thing. If you had some type of an event and you're not a football player, maybe you're an endurance athlete, you had a triathlon or a race, that sort of thing, and that's what you're going to use it for. Whatever then your needs may be, give the practice a try and see how it can best suit you. So here you go, our game day prep practice. Namaste. All right, guys, so we're going to start today's practice in child's pose. So go ahead and take your knees out nice and wide. Okay, you can bring your big toes together. You're going to sink your hips back to your heels, and we're going to make this an active child's pose to start. So as you lower down, as you lower your forehead down to the floor, if your forehead doesn't lower all the way to the floor, you can always use a block for support. But we're going to take the arms nice and long. So we're going to spread the fingers out nice and wide. Start to walk them forward like you're pulling forward through the pads of the fingers. At the same time, you're pressing the hips back to the heels, and we're just getting nice and long through the side bodies. And as you come into this child's pose, we're going to start to come into your breath as well. We're going to take nice, long inhales in through the nose, nice, long exhales out of the nose. And as you start to come into that rhythmic breathing, you might begin to notice how you can use the exhales to kind of deepen that engagement and even deepen the sensation of that pulling forward and that pressing back action. Okay, and then just staying with that deep rhythmic breath, as you're ready, we're going to walk your hands over to the left. And we're going to walk the hands completely off of the mat, getting nice and long, especially through that right side right? But long through the left as well, so we're not crunching up the lower back on that left side and just breathing here. And as you stay with that rhythmic breathing, you might even begin to add what's known as the ujjayi breath, which is, you know, creating a little whispering sound in the back of the throat. The action in the back of the throat is kind of like you were fogging a mirror. It creates a little Darth Vader sound. And just bringing all of that attention and all that focus to that breath and to that sound. And then when you're ready, on an inhale, we're going to come back up to center. And on the exhale, we're going to move the hands over to the right. Okay, Getting nice and long, you know, especially through this left side. Okay, Like we're pulling forward and pressing back and feeling that stretch from the fingers and the left hand all the way down that side body into the lower back and the hips and just breathing here. Same thing here, using the exhales to kind of deepen that engagement, to deepen that sensation of that pulling forward and that pressing back. And then as you're ready, we're going to take the hands back to center and on an inhale we'll come up to tabletop. Okay, so the elbows, wrists, and shoulders are stacked, the knees and hips are stacked, and we're going to start to move through what's known as a little bit of cat-cow here. So just kind of easing into this engagement, on your inhale, take your gaze up, take your tailbone up, let the belly dip, start to pull the shoulder blades down and in, so we start to create traction in the spine, as if the spine's moving in opposite directions, and then exhale, we're going to take it underneath, and we're going to round the spine, so you pull the hips under, gaze under, nice round spine, and then just keep moving with the breath here, inhale, coming up, and exhale, rounding, and then just continuing to move with the breath here. And as you start to move through your cat-cow, guys, if it feels good to kind of move the hips around a little bit, to add a little organic movement, a little side-to-side, -side, forward, backward, don't be afraid to explore a little bit. Okay? Don't be afraid to move where the body tells you, but just really using the breath to explore, using those exhales to empty and inhales to get long. And we'll go just a couple more times. Exhale, rounding. All right, inhale, finding length. And then one more time, we'll exhale round. On your inhale, we'll come back to neutral. And then on your exhale, we're going to find our first downward facing dog. We're going to curl the toes underneath and using blocks in this downward facing dog, assuming that most of the guys that we work with that are football players are going to need the blocks in downward dog. Curling the toes underneath, we're going to take the hips up and back. 
And really this downward facing dog, the purpose is just to open up the calves, open up the back sides of the legs, the hamstrings a little bit. So we're going to walk it out. But notice how Jonathan takes that weight, how he's pressing out of the hands, out of the shoulders to shift that center of gravity back toward the back of the mat where he can press down and start to open up the backs of the legs a little. And just using that breath, using the exhales to deepen, to engage. And then what we're looking for in downward facing dog in terms of alignment is that kind of straight line from right here, from the fingers all the way through the tailbone. And for us big guys with, tight, with a tight chest and tight shoulders, using the blocks helps us give us that space to the mat that we might not otherwise have if we just take our hands to the floor. Okay, now when you're ready, we're going to shift forward. We're going to come to the top of our push-up. Just holding here for a breath or two. And then for the purpose of ease in this practice, we're going to drop the knees and you're going to lower all the way down to your belly. We're going to come all the way down to the floor. And from here, we're going to move into a back bend, a gentle back bend in Sphinx posture. So in Sphinx, we're going to bring the forearms to the floor. You can start to bring the gaze forward. And just as we talked about in, that, in Cat Cow, when we were talking about creating a little traction in the spine, the action is as if you're pulling that chest toward the front of your mat, toward the front of the room, like you're trying to pull your chest out in front of the shoulders and just lengthening that spine so the spine is being pulled out of the waist. And we're just getting nice and long, taking a few breaths right here, staying with it. Good. We'll get one more deep breath right here in Sphinx. And then exhale, we can go ahead and lower down. And when you're ready, nice and easy, we're going to take it back to downward facing dog. I'm going to press up and back. And go ahead and grab your blocks. Once again, shift that weight to the back side and go ahead and walk it out just a little bit. Okay. And then starting to move a little bit here, guys, at the bottom of your exhale, what we're going to do is we're going to walk the feet forward between the hands, always keeping at least the fingertips grounded to protect the lower back coming into a forward fold. And then as you're ready, we're going to inhale halfway lift and lengthen. So you lengthen the spine that helps to lengthen the hamstrings a bit and exhale, fold forward and release. Now we're going to do that two more times. So here we go. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold. And one more time, deep inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, release, and step your left foot back into a low lunge right here. Now, if you really need to back off today, if your legs are a little fried, you can always drop that left knee down to the mat. But for the purpose of today's practice, we want to try to keep that knee lifted so that we can just start to fire that back leg up just a bit before we start to get into that hip flexor on the left side. Now, coming into our first twist, the left hand is down on your inhale. We're going to go ahead and take your right hand high. And just open up into a twist. Once again, if you need to, if you need to back off, if you don't want to fire that thigh up too much, that left knee can ground, but just staying right here. On the exhale, we're going to go ahead and take that right hand down. We're going to drop the left knee, release the top of the foot, bring both hands to the right thigh. Nice and tall, guys. We're going to move into what's known as Anjaneyasana. This is crescent moon. We're going to get into the hip flexor. You're going to sink forward and down. And as you do, keeping the hips level so we're not just dumping into that right thigh, we're also lifting out of the waist so there's no pinching, no compression here in the lower back. So he's getting nice and long. And then there's a little scissoring action where that right heel is pulling in toward the midline and the left hip's pulling forward. It's going to get all the way into that psoas muscle. Okay, and then you can stay here with the hands on the thigh, stay grounded, nice strong foundation, or you can take the arms overhead. You can get nice and long and reach up through the fingertips and hold right here. Okay, no matter where you're at, on the exhale, we're going to take your hands to the ground. We're going to curl the toes underneath. We're going to lift the back knee. Then we're going to ground the heel, angling that foot out, and inhale coming up into a warrior two. 
Okay, so exploring the lunge in that right leg, okay, firing up the thigh just a little bit here, pressing back through the outer edge of the left foot, fingers active, the shoulders are soft, gaze over the fingertips and straight from warrior two into extended side angle here. We're going to shift forward, right elbow to the right knee. There's a little pressure from the elbow into the knee and the knee into the elbow. That left hand can come straight up if it's available. You might even start to take that arm up and over and start to work on opening up here through the side body, pressing through the outer edge of that left foot and reaching through these left fingertips. And then that pressure, that elbow to knee and knee into elbow helps to access the groin a bit, get into the hip a bit and facilitate that rolling action open. After a few breaths here, we're going to inhale, come back up through warrior two and straighten the front leg. We'll shorten the stance just a bit. And then we're going to move into extended triangle from here. We're going to shift forward, take the right hand to the knee or the shin, maybe the block. Left hand goes nice and high. And then notice how Jonathan's keeping that length out over the right thigh, right? We're looking for a long spine here and even a little softness in the knee. We want to make sure that we don't hyperextend here, but we're getting into that hamstring, getting into that right hamstring. Nice and long out over the right thigh. Stay with your breath even rooting down through the pads of the feet. Okay, and then after a few breaths here, an extended triangle on the inhale, we'll come back up. You can soften the knee to protect the hamstring. Inhale, come up. Hands to your hips. We're going to square the hips with the top of your mat, shorten your stance. We're going to move to revolved triangle from here. So with the hips square, you can have heel to heel alignment. You can always step the left foot out a little bit wider if you need to for balance purposes. And then as you're ready, inhale, the left hand's going to go nice and high. Exhale, reach forward, fold forward, take the left hand down to the block. Inhale, lengthen through the top of your head, nice long spine. Okay. And then exhale, the right hand goes high. Okay. And then keeping the hip square or needing to find some action here, we'll pull that left hip forward and that right hip back keeping that back leg nice and straight, pressing through that heel and opening up through the torso. You get along, you get a nice little stretch in that right hammy and down the IT band on the outside of that right thigh. After a few breaths here, we'll exhale, the right hand comes down. We're going to step your left foot forward to meet your right. We're going to inhale, halfway lift. Okay, and then on the exhale, we're going to step your right foot back and we're going to find that low lunge on this side now. All right. So once again, we're just activating this back leg, getting a little bit of blood flow into that thigh, lifting the knee, pressing through the heel. And then as you're ready, we're going to take a twist here, right hand down, the left hand goes high, find your twist and breathe, right? One line, fingertip all the way down through the wrist, staying with that nice long inhale, that nice long exhale, that ujjayi breathing. Then exhale, we'll go ahead and take that left hand down. We're going to drop the knee, release the foot, inhale, bring both hands to the left thigh, and exhale, sink forward and down. Finding Anjaneyasana here. Nice long spine out of the waist. Hands can stay grounded on the knee. We start to scissor. The left heel's pulling in toward the midline. The right hip is pulling forward. Once again, getting into the hip flexor on the right side. Breathing here. Okay. And then on an exhale, we're going to take the hands to the floor to blocks. We're going to curl the back toes underneath, lift the back knee, ground the back heel in warrior two feet, and then inhale, open the arms here, warrior two. Okay, once again, starting to fire up that left thigh this time, sinking in, exploring the knees above or behind the ankle, no more than 90 degrees here, pressing through the outer edge of this foot. Then we'll explore extended side angle on this side, shift forward, left elbow to the right knee, the right arm comes straight up. And then once again, maybe it comes up and over and you're trying to find that line here from the heel through the fingertips, elbow into the knee, knee into the elbow once again. Maybe here, yeah. And then as you're ready from extended side angle, we're going to come back up through warrior two, straighten the front leg, shorten the stance just a tad for extended triangle here, shift forward, the left hand down, the right hand high, 
once again, to the block. And notice that length, that long spine and over the right leg. Notice how he's giving himself that space to soften the knee just a tad, if that's what you need to do. Staying with the breath, feeling those subtle changes in sensation in the hamstring. Rooting down through the pads of the feet. And then once again, as you're ready, we'll inhale, come back up, soften the knee, protect the hammy. Come all the way up, hands to your hips. Square off with the top of your mat, shorten your stance just a bit. We'll go to revolve triangle on this side. Okay, so as you're ready, inhale, the right hand goes high. Exhale, we're going to reach forward, fold forward. Shin, foot, floor, or a block. Inhale, lengthen through the top of your head, and exhale, twist. The left hand goes high. And then watch the hips. Left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward right here. Revolve triangle and deep breaths. Right, Rooting down through the outer edge of this right foot, this right heel. Nice, long, straight right leg. Breathe. Then we'll exhale. We're going to take the left hand down. We're going to step your right foot forward to halfway lift. Then we're exhale. We're going to step your left foot back and moving into a lizard lunge. We're going to start to open up the hips a little bit, open up the groin. So to set up, we'll drop this back knee. We can take the blocks. We're going to move them to the inside of the right foot. You might take your right foot to the right just a little bit and angle the toes up toward that top right corner to release a little tension there in the groin and the hips as you start to lower down. And what we'll do is we'll lower the forearms down two blocks. If you need to, you can stack blocks, guys. You can stack them two or three high if you're that big, if that's what you need to do. If blocks aren't available, you can always just come to your fingertips and kind of work on just lowering down and sitting with that tension in the hip, right? And then just letting the head hang heavy, staying with that ujjayi breath. You want to stay with that nice, long, soft breath. And if for any reason you need more, you need a little bit more work, you might even curl the back toes underneath and lift the back knee. But always remember, if you start to explore that option if it, and it's too much, Go ahead and drop the knee back down. Remember, it's not a competition. There's no need to ever experience pain in your yoga practice. A little discomfort is to be expected. That's what, we are, that's what we're working with. That's what we're breathing through, but no pain. Okay, and then when you're ready, as we start to come out of this posture, you're going to walk your hands up. We're just going to take the right leg back to a tabletop. You can give yourself a little bit of movement. Maybe take the knee out to the side, wiggle the hips a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when you're ready, we're just going to move to the other side by stepping that left foot forward, setting up the blocks, and just starting to make your way to the other side. One piece at a time. Maybe you angle the toes out. Maybe you shift the foot a little bit to the left. You start to walk down to the forearms. Use blocks. You can take it all the way to the floor if it's available. Let the head hang heavy. Right? And then working with whatever option you took on the other side. Okay, So if you were right here, that's great. If you were curling the toe underneath and lifting the knee, exploring that option, you might do so here. And then once again, just working with whatever it is you need. If you need this work, great. If not, you can always just work with the knee down. But just staying with the breath. And as it pertains to these hip openers that we're working with, you know, you can stay here for as long as you need to. You can stay here for less than we're queuing. Whatever you really need. Now, in terms of athletes, though, these are probably this posture and the one that we're about to do next are by far the most important that I have found in working with athletes. So when you're ready, we're going to go ahead and come on up. You can take the left leg back. Once again, give yourself a little bit of movement here as well. And then this time from tabletop, guys, we're going to move into downward facing dog. And then moving into half pigeon from here. 
staying with the hips. We're going to inhale, take the right leg high. On the exhale, bring that right knee forward toward the right wrist. Release the shin and the foot, and then use that left foot. We're going to walk the foot back. That helps to drop the hips down. And then you can kind of play with the shin in terms of angling it in align with the top of your mat. Typically, what happens is, is the further you pull that foot forward, the more that we run the risk of getting some sensation going on in the knee, and we want to stay away from that. We want to keep it all in the hip. Okay, So you can kind of use that for, for a gauge in terms of where the foot needs to be. But when you're, when you're nice and set up here, you can start to walk the hands forward, and you can come on down. You might lower the forehead down to the floor. If it doesn't come to the floor, you can use blocks, right? But working on keeping these hips level so that we're not just completely sinking off and dumping off into the right side. And once again, trying to keep that sensation in the hip and not moving into the knee. Now, for some of us, this is just going to be completely unavailable, right? Super big guys, super tight hips, this might not work. So we're going to show you a little variation to work with here, okay? If this version of, of pigeon isn't working, what you can do is just go ahead and make your way to your back. You can come down to the floor. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the right ankle up and over the left knee. And then he's going to kind of just thread the hands through to the knee, to the left knee, and then drawing that ankle back, we can start to get into that right hip. Now, this might not be even available for some of us, the idea of just reaching through and grabbing the knee, in which case maybe it's just leaving the foot planted on the floor, right, and just applying a little bit of pressure to the inside of the thigh, the knee, to get into the hip. And you can play with that foot anywhere along the way. You can have that foot grounded here, if you need to, you could, all, you could always use blocks and place the foot on blocks to help give you that space to lift up and back. But if you're on your back, you can just stay here as you move to the other side. Just place the right, hand, right foot down and move to the left. Okay, if you're in half pigeon with us, then what you can do is, Jonathan, you can go ahead and make your way back to tabletop. You come to tabletop, give yourself a little bit of movement. And then we're just going to transition to the other side. Excellent. From downward facing dog. So here we go. Inhale. We'll take the left leg high. Left knee to the left wrist. Moving into half pigeon on the other side. Once again, guys, if you are on your back, you're just going to take that left foot up and over the right knee this time. And then notice he gets nice and tall. We're going to walk the hands forward. Once again, coming all the way out of the hips. The spine's nice and long. And then we can lower down. And you really want to try to release tension in the upper body so you can really just focus on what's going on with that hip. Focus on that sensation that you feel in that left hip. And then once again, we're just staying with that deep breathing here. Focusing on those subtle little changes in sensation that you feel in the hip. And as always, first and foremost, that breath is the most important part of our yoga practice. And the effects that it has on the nervous system. So regardless of where we're at, regardless of what posture we're exploring, we're always working with that deep rhythmic breathing, that ujjayi breath, that whispering sound. And then when you've gotten what you've needed out of half pigeon on this side, you can start to walk your hands up. We'll come back to a tabletop, give ourselves a little bit of movement. Okay, and then we're going to focus on the bottom of the feet a little bit. We're going to get into a little toe stretch here. So as long as we don't have any problems going on with the feet in terms of plantar fasciitis, or you don't have any ankle injuries going on, you know, you can start to explore opening up the feet a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into a uh, squatting position first. Okay, so you just kind of walk it back. We're going to bring the big toes together. 
Make sure that you are grounded through all 10 toes as much as possible. And then this might be enough for you right here. Even with the fingertips grounded, just curling the toes underneath, you might start to feel a nice deep stretch in the bottom of the feet. And you can sit right there and sit with the breath. If you've got more available to you, you might be able to start to walk your hands up your thighs and just come into kind of a seated position here where you just get nice and tall. Now, remember, it's never a competition. So if at any point that gets to be too intense, you can always just walk your hands forward or you can come up and come up and out of the seat for just a couple of breaths and relieve that relief, get some relief in the bottom of the feet, relieve that tension, but always staying with the breath, right? And we might only be here for a minute, maybe two minutes, okay? And then when you're ready, you can just kind of walk your hands forward, maybe pat the tops of the feet against the mat a little bit. And then we're going to get into the top of the feet and the ankles, getting into a seated hero posture. Now, the main thing in working with hero is, is being mindful of the knees. Okay, we don't want to stretch that patella tendon. We don't want to uh, we don't want to get too deep into that stretch and to where we start to feel sensation in the knees. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to take your feet out, right? We're going to knees together. We're going to take your feet out a little bit wider. The, the toes point straight back. You might clear that flesh of the, with the calves by peeling that out a little bit. Now, for some of us, we might be able to walk it straight back just like Jonathan is right now and start to sit down into full hero. For most of us, this isn't going to be the case. Okay, you've got one block. Yeah, you can just use that one. So Jonathan's going to demonstrate using one block right here to give yourself space to the floor. Guys, if you need two blocks, use two. You might use two blocks and even a blanket underneath it, okay, to start to find that. But what we're looking for is we're really trying to focus on what's going on right here with the shin, the top of the foot, and the ankle, right? And then just staying with the breath here. But once again, don't be afraid to modify, don't be afraid to use blocks to go ahead and lift up, to lift the rear end a little bit higher so it's not quite as intense if that's where you're at. It takes a long time to get to where you can start to lower all the way down to the floor for most of us. Okay, and then when you've gotten what you need out of Seated Hero, you can go ahead and start to walk your hands forward. And then one foot at a time, we're going to press into the ball of the foot, just extending one leg back, releasing that tension, staying with the breath. And then we'll go to the other side. And then we're going to take downward facing dog and really walk it out. And then as you're ready, guys, what we're going to do is you're going to come back down to tabletop. You can sink your hips off to the side, swing your feet around to the front of your mat, and just go ahead and lie down flat on your back, Jonathan. Okay, and from here, guys, we're going to move into bridge posture. So you're going to bring the soles of your feet to the mat. You want to walk your heels up toward your rear end where your fingertips might graze the back of your heels. If not, you're at least close. Okay, we've got the palms face down, and as you're ready, what you're going to do is you're just going to lift your hips up. Okay, and with athletes, we're always talking about that glute engagement. So there is a subtle engagement of the glutes here as you lift, but not so much so that the knees start to bow out. We want to keep the knees aligned right over the ankles here. So just lifting and breathing right here. Now, you can stay right here. If you've got the flexibility and you can walk the hands underneath and interlace the fingers, you can start to shimmy the shoulders together as well, and that helps to create a little bit of a shelf right here in bridge. Good. We'll take one more deep breath here, and then on the exhale, we're going to lower down one vertebra at a time. We can go ahead and windshield wiper the knees a little bit side to side. Okay. 
and then when you're ready, we're going to move into a couple of spinal twists. Before we do, we're going to get into the hips. So let's release the left leg forward and draw the right knee into your chest. Just interlace the fingers around your knee. And just spend a couple of breaths here getting into that hip. If you want to add a little movement, you might take the knee out to the ribs, take it out to the side a little bit. Yep, and then when you're ready, you can go ahead and take a spinal twist here, and we'll just drag that knee up and over to the other side. And letting the hip come all the way over, and then just taking your gaze over your right shoulder, and staying with your breath right here. Staying with that ujjayi breath all the way through the practice, guys. And when you're ready, we're going to come back to center. We'll hug the knees into your chest. And then we'll transition through to the other side. Go ahead and release that right leg forward. Get into the hip a little bit. Stay here for just a few breaths. And when you're ready, you can take your twist on this side. You can drag the knee up and over to the right. Let that hip come all the way over and take your gaze over your left shoulder. Once again, stay with the breath. We're almost there. Really work on the inhales through your practice, guys. If you can get nice long inhales, the exhales will take care of themselves. Good. And then we're going to just come back to center. Last posture before Shavasana, before our final meditation, is happy baby. So you're going to grab the outsides of your feet. We're going to bring the feet parallel with the ceiling. Okay, And then there's a whole lot of action in this posture, not a whole lot of movement. From here, we're going to start to lower the tailbone down at the same time we're lowering the shoulders down, right? So then you can see the feet stay relatively the same. We're here parallel. But that's driving the knees straight down in terms of action, at getting into the groin, getting into the hips one last time. We'll stay here for you know, at least a good five breaths. Get what you need out of happy baby. And then when you're ready, you can kind of hug your knees into your chest one last time. And we'll make our way into Shavasana, which is our final meditation, right? We'll release the feet forward. Bring your arms to your sides, palms face up if that's comfortable. And then closing the eyes. Close your eyes. And then we're going to take three deep cleansing breaths here, guys. We're going to take a deep, deep inhale in through the nose. And then on the exhale, let it sigh out of your mouth. Just let it all go. And again, here we go. Deep inhale in. Exhale, let it fly. Let it go. Deepest breath of the day right here. Deep, deep inhale in. Exhale, let it all out. And then just release and let go. Okay, let your entire body just melt into the floor underneath you. Settle into that space deep inside. Into Shavasana and our final meditation. I'd encourage you guys to spend at least a good 10 minutes here in meditation at the end of your practice. However, you can stay for as long as you need, as short as you need. Whatever you do, keep practicing. Namaste.